On the highway junction between Bodh Gaya to Jahanabad lies the Barabar and Nagarjuni caves. As we reach closer to the destination, a huge whale-shaped rock faces us. Believe it or not, these caves are the earliest specimens of Buddhist rock cut caves. The interiors have been chiseled to a wonderful finish. They speak highly of the skill of the Indian builders of the 3rd century BC. The Subama cave dates back to 257 BC. This is different from others. It has a circular hall and hemispherical dome. The holy chanting echoes in these caves. These caves were excavated by Emperor Ashoka in his reign. They bear an inscription to show that it was donated by him for the use of monks. The Lomas Rishi cave was left unfinished. The entranceway to these caves bear intricate engravings. Amidst this panoramic grandeur and natural beauty, one can enjoy boating. A small temple on the Siddheshwar peak is dedicated to Lord Shiva. It is believed that there are many more undiscovered caves which could enthuse an adventurous minded tourist. Like the Barabar, the Nagarjuni caves are situated a little away. These caves are sacrosanct for another sect of Buddhists. The edicts here are much more elaborate. Comfortable accommodation with a restaurant has been set up in this wonderful setting. Travelling from Gaya on smooth motorable roads is Rajgir. Located in a verdant valley, surrounded by rocky hills and lush green forests, Rajgir was the favourite abode of Lord Buddha. This hill town was once the capital of the mighty Magadha Empire. Gridakut, or Vulture's Peak, is famous in Buddhist history as the place where the Buddha set in motion his second wheel of law. For three months every year, during the rainy season, he preached many inspiring sermons to his disciples. It was in these hills where he proselytized Bindasar to Buddhism. The king made a flight of steps to reach the summit. At some distance from the summit, there are a number of small caves used by monks. The Buddha Sangha of Japan has constructed a massive modern stupa, Vishwashanti stupa, on top of the hill in commemoration. Every year on 25th October, a special ritual takes place here. Buddhists from all over the world assemble here and renew their pledge of love and peace advocated by the Buddha. A seven-kilometer bridge path leads up the hill, 
but it is much more fun to take the aerial chairlift. The aerial link with the top provides a splendid view of the hills of Rajgir. Within the valley, the Jivak Amravan Monastery has been excavated. It was the favorite retreat of the Lord. The famous physician Jivak treated him here when he was injured by his cousin Devdak. The other places worth visiting include the ancient Chaitya or Maniyar Mat, so called after an old small shrine. Several pieces of Buddhist sculpture were discovered here. Bimbisar had presented a monastery, the Venu Van Bihar, to Lord Buddha for his residence at Rajgir. This was his first offering to the master. Two rather strange cave chambers hollowed out of a single massive rock are the Swan Bhandar Caves. The doorway of the cave leads to King Bimbisar's treasury. Bimbisar's jail is the site chosen by the captive king from where he could see Lord Buddha climbing atop the Gridakut hills. A rectangular stone sculpted by the forces of nature appears to have been used as a watchtower. It later became the resort of pious hermits. Called the Pipala Cave, it is popularly known as the Jara Sandki Bathak. A newly built Jain center, Virayatan, is another tourist attraction. The museum has several artifacts on Jainism. While climbing the Vaibhargiri hills, which is difficult to approach for the untrained, there are several Jain and Hindu temples along the path. On one of the hills are the Saptapadni caves, where the first Buddhist councils were held. His teachings, which were hitherto unwritten, were penned down at Rajgir after his Nirvana. The Saptapadni caves are also the source of the Rajgir hot water springs. The springs have curative properties and are sacred to the Hindus. The stay here is made enjoyable with comfortable rooms. The journey is equally pleasant with reliable transport facilities organized by the Bihar Tourism Development Corporation. A short drive on the Rajgir Patna Road takes one to Nalanda. It has the ruins of the world-renowned University of Nalanda. The structural remains here belong to the period between the 5th and 12th century AD. This vast residential university provided facilities for scholarly pursuits for about 10,000 students from different parts of Asia, under 2,000 teachers. Kings and emperors built monasteries and temples here. Carefully excavated remains reveal stupas, a large stairway, lecture halls, dormitories, meditation centers, wells, etc. From the top, the visitor can obtain a wide view of the entire site.